well. And it's just an incredible performance, really, by both clubs. Every night at the rummyreport.com, you pick your top dog. And this, yeah. is, this is the true story. Now, you said to me about 15 minutes ago, you said, Bob, who do you think the top dog would be? It's got to be Mike Timlin, right? And what did I say? I said, except if who goes deep. <laughs> yeah, if Nixon goes deep, so Nixon's the top dog, and uh, you can take credit for it. Well, let's uh, show you the home run again, uh, Jerry, and just kind of take us through this. Well, they got Rich Harden in the ball game, a hard throw. He's going to be 95-96. Now, Nixon has not had a lot of at-bats lately, right? He hasn't played very much. But when you haven't played very much, usually your timing is on a fastball. He got the fastball out over the plate, straight away center field, and watched the celebration at home play. This is something the team desperately needed, obviously, to continue this playoff going. But also, they haven't had this in the first two games, the big hit. They got it tonight from a guy who really hasn't had many at-bats. But I've always said when guys spend a long time on the bench, don't get many at-bats. It's the fastball that they geared up for. He got the fastball from Harden. It's the home run. Interesting move by Ken Maka to bring in the young pitcher that's going to primarily go with the heat. And Jimmy, as uh, Jerry just said, clearly, you know, if they lose, they're going home. The season's over. But to win in this fashion, it's better than, I would imagine, winning 6 to nothing. You win with a walk-off like this and playing tomorrow afternoon at 1 has to give a little extra momentum for tomorrow. Any way you can win, regardless of what the score, as far as coming by, you win, you win. And, of course, like Jerry said, by being eliminated, as far as they're not winning tonight, tomorrow's going to give them a boost. Like when we went to Oakland, uh, they lost, uh, Red Sox lost the first game. That gave Oakland the boost. Now this could give us a boost. Now, this is one of those uh, plays, too, that a lot of times it's the momentum that carries them on. You remember back, uh, you know, Jimmy Williams. I remember Jimmy Williams, Jerry, saying that, you know, Cleveland better sweep us back in 99 because if they don't, uh, we're going to do some damage. And I think this team kind of has a similar feeling. Well, there's tremendous pressure, obviously, on the Red Sox tonight. And they handle that pressure beautifully, you know, to come out with this win. Uh, I've always said momentum carries as far as the next day's pitcher. And they've got a pretty good pitcher facing them tomorrow. But obviously, they're high as a kite right now. They're anxious to get back to the ballpark tomorrow. Something Oakland has to be thinking about. But they do have Hudson and Zito ready for the next couple of games. Frustrating night for the Oakland Athletics and manager Ken Maka. Let's go downstairs live to the podium. That was his interpretation of that. What's your interpretation? Um, it appeared that he ran two-thirds of the way down, so I don't know. Tom, did you have a question? You were arguing with uh, the I thought he continued to run. Well, Destruction happened around the base. I thought he continued to run. Obstructed by the well, third baseman, but I never saw him. Another one? Again, we're not going to do this pregame tomorrow, so, Michael? Washington's out to get into the face of Bill Wilkie. But Tejada collided with the third baseman. A couple of plays where we just first home play, the fielding, and some of the other things that happened to you guys in the past. Did you feel you squandered a couple of opportunities? And considering what's happened in the past, do you think this might have a hangover effect? Well, um, I think we, I hope some of the guys learned a little bit of a lesson on, on a couple of the plays. Uh, it's kind of fortunate it happens in a game like this. But, uh, you know, uh, Jason blocked the plate real well. Ball got by. You know, I think. Um, Burns was, uh, his knee was hurting. He was more concerned about his knee. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, worked out a lot better if he went over and touched on plate. Uh, we were screaming out of the dugout for him to go do it, but you know, it was tough. So, and we played a poor uh, second inning. Um, it's amazing that uh, I think we gave him seven outs in that second inning. It's amazing he only got one run. Uh, I thought Ted pitched uh, extremely well, uh, as did our bullpen. So, um, you know, we got to bounce back tomorrow. Another one? Anything else for Ken? Again, he's not going to be available in this room pregame tomorrow, so. Yes, sorry. Ken, can you talk about the performance out of Ted Lilly and his ability to keep this would you talk no. about Ted Lilly's performance? Well, absolutely. Uh, like I said, I thought he uh, did a tremendous job uh, limiting him just to one run in the second inning. Uh, stuff was outstanding. He's very aggressive. Uh, had a good fastball. Um, pitched tremendous. One more? Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Ken. Mm -hmm. 
Obviously, he's dejected, guys. Uh, you lose a game like this in this fashion, but he looks at that sixth inning, Jerry, and you heard him say they were yelling at the bench for Burns to go back yeah. and touch the plate. Great play by Jason Veritek. Well, that's something we've become accustomed to. I mean, Veritek's one of the best in baseball, and is certainly in blocking home plate, and he did it again here. He sticks out that left foot as he comes into home plate, and you can see, clearly see that Burns didn't get any part of it, and he's hurt. He's a little bit shook up right now. He doesn't even know he didn't get the plate. Veritek knows it, runs back to tag him, and he gets the out. Huge, huge play in the game, but you know, even where Veritek didn't have a chance to catch the ball, he still does something like he's done all year long to get that foot out there, block the plate, and not allow that man to score. And see the umpire, very good call. No call by the umpire, which meant that everybody in the ballpark knew if you go tag Burns now, you've got the final out. Yeah, Jimmy, that's one of the things the entire bench, they're watching the home plate umpire, the fact that he doesn't make a signal, that's the signal to everybody on both sides that, hey, that guy didn't tag home plate. But the most important part, Veritek knew he was going to tag home plate because Veritek had the left leg out there. There was no way he was getting by Veritek. Veritek has been so good about that. Let's ask you about the obstruction play because yeah. we might have a little difference of opinion here. The Red Sox catching some breaks, obviously, in this ball game. We seem to think it probably was obstruction. Kind of agree with Ken Maka. Yeah, my init initial reaction, and I think I'm going to stay with it, is I think it was an obstruction play because there was no play being made right there on, uh, on Tejada at third base. Now, there's no question that he was slowed up as he comes around third base. The ball's in the outfield now, and there's a collision right there with uh, Bill Miller. That certainly slowed him up. The mistake, Tejada should have kept running. If he keeps running, then they probably get the call, but he stops, and then they have the big uh, decision. Everybody gets together and decide it's not obstruction. They call it for the final out of the inning. In my opinion, I thought that was, but we got a pretty good clarification from Steve Palermo uh, during the ball game, and the umpires did all gather together to get it right, because you'll never convince that to Ken Marker. Yeah, Jerry, Steve Palermo, I think, is in a tough position down there. I mean, he is the head of the umpires. He's there to basically work with these guys. He had a pregame meeting with them. You heard him say, we told the guys there are 12 eyes out there, get together. So it would be hard for him to come on national television after the play is already gone and contradict what they did, wouldn't it be? Well, I think you know, I, I agree with that. And I also think that, you know, like Jimmy said earlier when we were watching the game, if he continues to run, it's no problem. The fact is, the hottest stop, he thought the call was made by the third base umpire who just pointed. He didn't make the obstruction call. But, um, you know, the, then the question becomes, can he score? I think he would have scored. And uh, that's why I said it was probably obstruction, but... Uh, we'll take it. Yeah, Red Sox catch a break on that one. Red Sox will take a dramatic win in Game 3 as the Red Sox get right back in this series. It's two games to one for the Oakland Athletics. Game 4 is tomorrow afternoon. We have a lot to go, though, here tonight on WB Nation's X Earnings. Lots of post-game reaction. More analysis from Jim Rice and Jerry Remy. Stay with us here on your New England Sports Network. When you're playing to win, you always put in your toughest players. That's why it's the season for Ford Super Duty, truck season. Ford Super Duty has the most pulling power on the planet. Now during truck season, get Super Duty with up to $4,000 cash back or 0% financing. Qualified commercial customers are eligible for a $1,000 upfit reimbursement. That's up to $4,000 cash back or 0% financing on Super Duty. Truck season going on now at your New England Ford dealer. Elm trees used to line the streets. Then there was a blight and they were gone. Except in Asia, where elms are plentiful. You promised that furniture shopping will never be the same. Now, the Bobbinizer 2 in solid elm. Try finding solid elm anywhere at any price, never mind only $19.99. It's gorgeous and the grain is so fine. If you buy elsewhere without seeing this solid elm bedroom for only $19.99, you have done yourself a huge disservice. Try a delicious breakfast sandwich on a freshly baked bagel from Dunkin' Donuts. It's just the thing you've been waiting for. Stop by today for any one of our delicious breakfast sandwiches, including the new sourdough bagel sandwich for just $1.99. Just the thing. You bring me Masaka or it's your badge! Come on, Buddy Lee. Let's make like a tree and go. Gots to get me some of those jeans. Tonight's show is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office product supplier of the Boston Red Sox. Well, 
one of the keys for the Red Sox in this game was uh, just to put it together and uh, get the offense going at Fenway Park. You thought they would against Ted Lilly, but they had trouble coming up with a big hit. Damian Jackson sends the ground to third. This is called obstruction, and Jason Veritek scores. That's an interesting play, too, Jerry. Yeah, it certainly is, you know, because he was going back to the third base back, but the Athletics had two guys in the same position trying to make the play. Had it been one guy there, I don't think they would have called obstruction on this play. But as you can see, if they start to run it back, you're going to have two guys, both Chavez and Tejada, close to the back. So one of those guys is being called from obstruction, and uh, that obviously gives the Red Sox another break here by allowing Verete to come on and score. Well, the Red Sox will take it. We'll talk more about that obstruction play because you may be wondering why he was, in, he was awarded home and uh, the Athletics were not. A little bit later, Miguel Tejada. Little swinging bunt. This works out well because Jason Veritek blocks the plate. He blocks the plate, but why can they call interference on, on, on the runner that just came home? Because he pushed Veritek out of the way. But like I said, he blocked the plate. It's knowing where he was getting to the plate with uh, Veritek like that. What an incredible play by Jason Veritek. And as Jerry pointed out a little bit earlier, we're getting used to this stuff from Jason Veritek because it's the little things, Jerry. Well, you see, there's an example that a lot of catchers will not do because they'll be afraid of an injury. You know, they'll be afraid of tearing that knee up or an ankle. And Veritek has no fear at all, absolutely no fear. We see him do it all the time by sticking that leg out, the knee out, and uh, blocking the play. Now, this was the big controversial play of the night as the Athletics tied the game up. Ramon Hernandez into left field. Tejada collides with Bill Miller, and they don't call obstruction. Actually, they do call obstruction, Jerry, but they don't award him home plate. Because they didn't think he was going to score, and I think he would have scored. You see the throw from Manny. The, the throw was not even close. It was high and away. And also, uh, Tejada was slowed up around third base. So, I mean, I, I definitely think the run would have scored. And that sets this up. Walk-off home run for Trod Nixon. <laughs> Outstanding. I mean, Trod just came out and said, hey, like, look for something hard. Just calm his nerves down and just what happened. They're used to celebrating like this, Jerry. I mean, they've had uh, none of the playoffs so far this year, but they've had celebrations like this at home plate. Well, they've had a lot of them this season, but this is huge. I mean, you know, you're... You're, uh, you're one run away from going home, uh, you know, being swept out of a series by the Athletics, and, and you get a performance like that tonight. The great pitching in this, I mean, Derek Lowe came up big time. You know, everybody, some people worried, well, it's a big game, how's he going to handle it? He was huge. I mean, he had so many ground ball outs, easy outs that were made, uh, and, and I think some of the Oakland hitters really fed into him, too, because they were trying to pull the ball. A lot of those left-handed hitters, nice little ground ball to first base, to second base. He was outstanding in a big game. And Mike Timlin, Jerry, I mean, uh, oh. a lot of people saying he's no good after pitching one inning. We found out <laughs> He's good after two, and he can also go three. Yeah, he was lights out. I mean, he, you know, just came in. He's, he always throws strikes. He never walks anybody. Had a very good fastball. Made a couple of good plays himself on balls that looked like they were headed up the middle. But uh, three huge, huge innings uh, in a bullpen that has had some problems. And Timlin came up big time for him again tonight. I was down in the clubhouse today, and, of course, I wore... Uh, one of his shirts today, you know, this cowboy up. Did you really? Said, yes, I did. It's over there on the counter right now. And I said, uh, what are you going to do tonight? He said, just give me the ball. He got the ball tonight and see what happens. There has been that school of thought, Jerry, that if he pitches that one inning, he can't come back for the second because teams figure him out. Like happened in game one, they didn't let him go two. But he proved that that's uh, some, some misinformation, I think, going out there as well. You look up the numbers, he's been okay sometimes in those second innings. He was great tonight. I mean, you know, not only came out the second, and he came back for the third inning, and uh, it was no contest at all. But, you know, Timlin's a guy that comes out, he throws hard, he'll throw the sinking fastball, he'll throw the rising fastball, he just did there to Burns to pick up the strikeout. Very few off-speed pitches. Every now and then a changeup, every now and then a slider. But it's mostly fastball you're going to get from Timlin, either cross-seam or sinking. A lot of uh, cross-seam is here, going up at the strike zone to pick up strikeouts. Of course, he's been uh, one of the most consistent guys out of the bullpen. The one problem with him has been the home run ball at times. It has been, but it wasn't tonight. No, absolutely not. <laughs> and how about Scott Williamson, Jerry, too? Because uh, here's another guy yeah. that I don't think uh, we're too confident in very many guys have come out of the bullpen, but he did a terrific job. Had a great fastball tonight and had that good snapping breaking ball, which I think is his best pitch. And, he, and once he got ahead of hitters, he was able to use that to put him away. So, uh, you know, here's a guy, too, that has had his problems. But tonight coming into, again, a pressure-packed situation. And that's what I'm most impressed with, with uh, the pitching tonight. I mean, it's not easy to go out there and pitch in, in these games where you're one game, one run away from elimination. And they all came in and did a fabulous job. Timlin followed by Williamson. Just incredible. There's the breaking ball right there. That's just a, uh, a jelly leg breaking ball right there. Just frees the hitter and throws it right over the middle of the plate. Jimmy, this team needs to know that they can count on the bullpen. And to watch the performance tonight will give them a little more confidence, I would imagine. Yes. You know, the bullpen is going to count on the hitters, too. And they go to vice versa. But I think what we have to do right now is just mainly just pull together, do the small things. We can't do what uh, Oakland did to us tonight as far as giving us seven outs. We can't do that. I mean, in the second inning, uh, Marcus said they gave us seven outs. We can't do that to them.
No question about that. Will they derive a lift? I mean, clearly they're still alive for Sunday, but how about the fashion in which they win? Is this kind of like a little springboard action for tomorrow's game? Uh, absolutely. You know, you come off two bad games uh, out in Oakland, you know, a, a very tough loss in the first game, and then you're shut down completely by Zeta. You're still not swinging the bat well. And here you go into X ratings again, and you have a walk-off home run. Okay, beautiful. We go to another day. John Burkett goes tomorrow. You'll have Wakefield available if needed. And one thing Oakland does not want to do is they don't want to go back to Oakland to face Pedro again. And you get to a game five with Pedro pitching, well rested, it's going to be tough. I think Pedro leaves, by the way, tomorrow for Oakland. I mean, that's kind of a tough situation for the ball club, but they don't want him to be flying and then playing that game on Monday. Well, they can't use him tomorrow. They're not going to use right. him, obviously, so I, I see what, no reason why he shouldn't do that. You know, if he's, whatever he's comfortable with. If he wants, it's a day game here. You pick up the three hours. If you want to go with the team, fine. Uh, if he wants to go out early, if he's more comfortable, send him out. Grady Little made a couple of gutsy decisions in the ball game. One was to leave Mike Timlin in. Worked out very well for the Red Sox. Let's go down to the podium, hear from the Red Sox manager. How much do you feel the momentum of this series has changed after this win tonight? I think I'd have to say it turned 100% out there tonight. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way our boys kept battling and finally got able to get it, got able to get it done there in, in the last inning. And it was great. Could you talk a little bit about how Derek Lowe took you pretty deep into the game? He did that. He was outstanding, and he pitched very well. And we couldn't ask any more of him after uh, coming back from the two innings that he threw the other night. He was outstanding. Don? How about the bullpen, Timlin at all? We've done a lot of talking about that bullpen since opening day this year, and tonight we're awfully proud of what they did. Timlin was outstanding for three innings, and then Williamson came in and did a great job there in the last inning, and it was outstanding. Back there. As a follow-up, given that he pitched three innings tonight, how available will he be for tomorrow? As a follow-up, given that he's pitched three innings tonight, how available is he tomorrow? Well, we'll have to wait till in the morning to check and make sure, but uh, right when I took him out of the game, I told him to go get in the whirlpool and stay there until tomorrow's game. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to be our age, like mine and Mike's, it takes a little bit more. Back there. Great. He just went one inning the other night. Can you talk about the decision-making process to have him go three and also your decision to have Pedro Ward come to both He only went one inning the other night. Did, could you talk about the decision to have him go three tonight and also about Pedro warming up in the bullpen? Well, tonight uh, was a different situation there. We're playing at home, the game's tied, and he was getting out of those innings with very short number of pitches, and so he never labored in the entire three innings he was out there, and there's no doubt in my mind he'll be ready to take the ball again tomorrow. And Pedro Martinez, a normal day for pitchers to throw on the side if they so choose. This guy, uh, we talked about it yesterday afternoon when he came out to throw in the outfield. In one case, was he going to pitch in this game tonight? And that's if we had a lead and he was going to pitch the top of the ninth. No more and no less had we had to leave. So he was ready to go down there if we were able to get that run across there in the ninth, in the eighth inning. Meanwhile, Oakland has gone to its bullpen. Would try to hit if there'd been nobody on base and could he have played in the outfield? Was he healthy enough? Yes, he was in the game and he was going to be in that game regardless after that inning. Right well, Grady uh, all season has had some frustrations with the bullpen. Not tonight. I think it was comical. Somebody asked him, would Mike Timlin be ready for <laughs> Sunday? Leave him in the whirlpool till tomorrow. But it'll be, I would imagine, Jerry, it would be difficult for him to come back and be effective tomorrow. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, three innings. He, he didn't really have a high, a high pitch count in the three innings, but uh, that would be off, uh, asking an awful lot of Mike Timlin to come back. And uh, hey, it's possible. We've seen it before. We saw Harden do it. Uh, uh, not Harden, excuse me. Keith Folk do it in this series after pitching three innings right. come back in the next day. It's possible. So we'll have to uh, wait and see until tomorrow. We'll talk more about this Red Sox offense. Certainly not a great night for the Red Sox offense. Jerry and Jim will break that down. Tom Caron is down on the field, and he'll have post-game reaction as well. You're watching W.B. Mason's Extra Innings on Nesson.
It was the crime of the century. Babe Ruth sold to the New York Yankees. And I meant to find out why. From W.B. Mason's Low Price Assurance Detective. The name's Mason, W.B. Mason. We were searching for clues to explain why the Red Sox sold Babe Ruth when I spotted a familiar suspect. Hello, boys. Ever seen this before? My office supply bill, so. So, that's high. So high, the Red Sox sold something big to pay it. Something big? If only the Red Sox had saved money on my office supplies. Who knows what might have been? Who knew? 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 Who but W.B. Mason? Good to taste the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field together. It's good to throw a 5,000 mile post pattern together. It's good to make your entire league beg for mercy together. NFL Fever 2004, ready to eat for everyone. It's good to play together. There was really outstanding pitching on both sides. The Red Sox did not have a big night offensively. Six times, though, guys, they got the leadoff man on. They weren't able to convert, though. Well, I credit pitching for that. I really do. You know, uh, much has been made about the lack of offense for the Red Sox, and certainly there has been. This has not been the same offensive club that we've watched all season long, but you've got to remember the pitching they're facing. And they're facing some of the top pitching in the game. Uh, obviously, this Oakland staff was number one in the league in pitching this year, and they pitched great in the series. And uh, this performance by Lilly tonight was the best that I've ever seen him pitch. You see, you look at the offense over the course of the year. Right now, we can't go over the course of the year. We got to go game to game. And right now, when you're facing good pitching, good pitching going to stop good hitting. And they only got six hits. We got seven. They got one run. We got three. That's all That's that matters. That's all that matters. Absolutely. Pitching, uh, you can't ask for much more than this when you look at the performance tonight from Lowe, Timlin, and Williamson. I mean, it was a textbook playoff pitching, Jerry. Well, you know, we always anticipate great pitching in any playoff. And you look at all the playoff games that have been played around baseball. They have been very few high-scoring games, if any, uh, so far. So, you know, that's what it comes down to when you get down, and especially in a short series like this. You're going to see only three of the Oakland starters. I mean, you're going to see uh, Hudson, Zito, and, of course, Lilly. And the Red Sox will add a fourth starter and John Burkett. So, I mean, you're seeing the top guys on every staff in a very short series. And uh, even though these numbers right here, as you look at, they're very difficult. 0 for 13 for David Ortiz in this series. He's had to face a couple of tough left-handers. Manny has not produced so far in this series. I had a sense tonight watching these guys, uh, I don't know, Jim, if you would agree, but watching Ortiz and Ramirez and guys like that, even Billy Miller. It seemed like everybody wanted to be the guy to get this thing started, you know? I think, yes, I think everyone would overswing it, trying to take it to a different level. But you can't do this. you got to stay within yourself. And like Joe Morgan said earlier, I think you have to do a lot of things with certain pitches. You have to move in the box. You have to make, move your feet a little bit to make them change. When you're 0 for 12, 1 for 13, pitch is not going to change. you got to make a change. Do they change that tomorrow, Jerry? I mean, do you think that by winning this game, and now they're not going to be swept, do those guys, Ortiz and Ramirez and Millar, play a little bit more comfortable? Well, I think, yeah, they come out more comfortable yesterday. They've got to win. You know, they've got to win at Fenway. They're very comfortable playing here. Good things have happened to, him, to them uh, in Fenway Park all season long. But again, you're going to have to see what Hudson brings to the table tomorrow. And uh, I don't think, I think we saw the best of Hudson in the, ver in the very first game that he pitched. Now he's working on three days rest tomorrow. What is he going to bring to that mound with him? He's going to determine how these guys swing the bat. No question. Let's uh, go down to the podium. Derek Lowe, tonight's starting pitcher and the hero of tonight's ball game, Trot Nixon. Patient team, especially early in the count, and then uh, then they get aggressive. So our, our game plan was to throw a lot of strikes um, to get into pitcher's counts. Um, you know, felt very confident with the, with a sinker from, uh, you know, pitch number one. And, uh, you know, just 
try to stay focused as, as much as you can, you know, especially the way Ted Lilly was pitching. He pitched a fantastic game, and, um, you know, there were a lot of uh, crazy incidents that happened in the game, but, uh, you know, just, just keep battling and, uh, you know, being a ground ball guy, when, when ground balls are going through, that's fine. I got no problem with that. You know, you're always one pitch away, but, you know, the, the team uh, to battle all night long, and, you know, uh, we get to play another one tomorrow. Okay, over here. Trot, uh, do you think that uh, home run will be a turning point? Trot, do you think that home run will be a turning point? Uh, I sure hope so. Um, you know, th this series wasn't going to be about uh, how many runs the Red Sox are going are gonna to score. I think uh, a lot of people saw that we had a great offense. We had a great offense during the season, and, you know, they got some great pitching over there. Um, they know we have a good offense, and we know they have a great pitching staff. And in the playoffs, you uh, have a tendency to see uh, a lot of uh, – pitching duels out there and uh, I think it's going to continue through the rest of the playoffs and, and hopefully it can jump start uh, this offense um, you know I, I think most guys just want to go up there and have good at bats good solid bats hit the ball hard and put the ball in play and uh, you know I, I haven't been to many playoffs <clears throat> but uh, your situations obviously dictate that your emotions tend to take uh, the best of you when you get out there certain situations yeah you, you want to hit a ball 600 feet you know um, uh, I asked the Lord to, to calm my emotions before I went to that plate because I knew if I'd gone up there, then I was going to try, I want to try to hit the ball, you know, off the Dunkin' Donuts sign. And, you know, I ended up rolling over the ball. And I mean, that had bad. I just I actually stayed through the ball a little bit. I didn't pull it. And uh, I think that's what helped me more than anything. Tron Nixon has always been a fan favorite at Fenway tonight, more so. He's had an incredible year, not just tonight, but uh, from day one this season, he's been very consistent. He really has, and it's too bad to see him hurt, you know, the last couple of weeks because uh, being hurt like that, he didn't get his share of at-bats, so he couldn't hit, and you lose your timing. And that's the one thing that concerned him starting this series. He made that comment when he was out in Oakland that the thing he was concerned about, I feel okay, but my timing's not good. Timing's going to get better after tonight. Surprised Jim at all that uh, Harden didn't try to disrupt that timing a little bit more, throwing more off-speed stuff? No, I think when you go with your best pitch, his best pitch is a fastball. At that period of time, he's going to go with his best pitch, and he's going to say, hey, look, I'm going to challenge this guy. This guy's coming up off the bench. He hasn't seen any pitches. He hasn't been in the game in a couple of days. Let's go and get him. That's what he did. All right, this season continues for the Boston Red Sox. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll come back. We'll get Jerry and Jim's opinion about uh, what to expect tomorrow. Game four at Fenway in a matter of hours. Three to one, the Red Sox win this one. <laughs> Hey, Log Boy. It's kind of warm in the casa, ain't it? Look, Log Boy's house, cold and dark. Fire Guy's house, warm and nice. It's funny, Bruce. <laughs> Natural gas heat from Keyspan is clean, reliable, and versatile. Ask about our home and hearth package with free oh, heating God. equipment. You got Keyspan in there, don't you? you? I've got Keyspan. And you've got, uh, logs? Keyspan Energy Delivery. The energy to think ahead. Some people work harder than others. That's human nature. Some clothes work harder than others. That's our nature. And like you, we must prove ourselves every day. Wear clothes that work as hard as you do. Carhartt. Original equipment since 1889. At Bob's, we know our customers, and we know Carhartt is one of the brands they live in. Don't need to adjust your set. Tune in and get out each week with Nesson Outdoors. Television's only all New England original outdoor programming block. It's three hours of fresh air, fun, and more. Charlie Moore, hosting all new episodes of Charlie Moore Outdoors, Northeast Journal, Camo Country, Let's Go Boating, and Divers Down. For outdoor adventure and a whole lot of more, it's Nesson Outdoors. Sponsored by Obishan Hardware. Sunday nights at 8 on Nesson. Hey, you think reality TV is hot? How's this for a reality check, okay? A bunch of 250-pound guys skating at you, full speed, elbows high, firing 100-mile-an-hour pucks in an enclosed arena of ice. And to add to the pressure, you're wearing the same B on your chest worn by Schmidt, Busick, Orr, Fork, and Neely. Huh? Put that on television, okay? And that, my friends, is cool TV. Get out of here! Boston Bruins hockey on Nesson. Cool TV, now in HD. 
This was an awesome night at Fenway Park. Bob Rogers, Jim Rice, Jerry, Remy, nice to have you with us for this special presentation of WB Mason's Extra Innings. Outstanding night, guys. There was one uh, bad moment, though, that we do have to share with the fans. Uh, you may have heard already reliever Byung Young Kim apologizing after tonight's game for a gesture that he made when fans booed him while he was introduced. Uh, apparently, it was a hand gesture. She can probably guess what it was, but Byung Young Kim saying, quote, I apologize to the fans of the Red Sox, the people of New England, and baseball fans throughout the world. It was an instant reflexive reaction that I regret. That was from Byung Young Kim just immediately after the ball game. Let's go downstairs right now because tonight's star, one of the stars, Mike Timlin, also has some comments about this issue. We comment on the whole Kim thing tonight with the fan gesture and all that. Well, I was... Uh I was a little embarrassed, you know, for, for us. Um, you know, I was standing right next to him, and uh, I, I, was, I was personally embarrassed. But, uh, you know, he's a man. He, you know, he's going to have to control his own actions. I, no one can do that for anybody else. So, you know, whatever happens, happens. But, you know, I, personally, I was embarrassed for myself and the Red Sox. Thank you. Mike, with uh, all the bullpen's been through, and everything that was said, you know, at times the season after game one, for you, what does that mean to this fans this team? Well, you know, it means a lot. You know, uh, they've the guys on the other side, the hitters, have never said you guys are bad. Never. I mean, they've believed in us from day one. You know, even when we've moved in guys in and out, and uh, they've shown support for us. And coming in, you know, I didn't want to let D'Lo down. He threw a great game, and I threw it out there, and then. And and Willie, you know, he, he backed it up. And, you know, it just gave our, our hitters a chance to, to score another run. You know, and we want to try to support what they're doing. And they believe in us, so we might as well believe in ourselves. You made a couple real efforts. Somebody that's like uh, the whole football deal, the offense against the defense, the bullpen has to sometimes feel like, you know, we're letting everybody down. It's a, you always have that on a ball club, you know, uh, whoever fails feels responsible for everybody else and there have been many times this season where they have had their troubles and, uh, and to the Red Sox credit, you know, they haven't blamed anybody and uh, they've gone out, they've tried to score as many runs as they possibly can for them and it pays off in a great performance tonight by Tim and a great performance by Williamson. I uh, don't want to gloss over this Byung Young Kim issue. Uh, obviously, Mike Timlin, a teammate, Jimmy, is, as he said, he was embarrassed by it. What's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, we can be comical about this, but... Uh, I didn't like it. It's not a good gesture, but then again, Kim could have been talking to uh, Rush Limbaugh, John Dennis, and Callahan. That's the way I feel about it. <laughs> oh, Inexcu thoughts? Inexcusable uh, for me. Uh, you know, here is a, uh, these are folks that have been paying big money to come to these games all season long to support this ball club. Uh, we all have our ups and downs uh, in baseball. Jimmy had them. I've had them. We've all had them. Every player in this clubhouse has had them. Uh, to go out and respond like that is immature and unacceptable. And with the commissioner here tonight and with the Red Sox brass here tonight, I would hope they would take some action. So you think maybe some discipline coming his way, suspension of some kind? Well, I don't know. Possible. Jerry, is he really overwhelmed by all of this, you know, playing in Boston, playing under this pressure? It seems like, um, you know, obviously he played in the World Series and he had some problems uh, against the Yankees with all the pressure, but does he, is he overwhelmed by this? I, I don't know if he's overwhelmed, but you could see his discouragement when he was brought out of the game in, in Oakland where he sat in the corner of the dugout. You could tell he was not happy with that. Uh, he felt like he was the closer. He was the guy that should have finished it. And now I think coming back here, he, feel like, he feels like he's taking the wrath of the fans because, because because of all that and uh, but even with that it, you just don't do things like that it's it's not acceptable it's a team effort I mean he's, he's got to go and realize that hey this is a team effort and if I'm not doing my job great you'll get someone else but as far as the way this fan supported us you can't do that that just like Jerry said unexcused you can't and, do it and it's really un out of character for this ball club this, this is not what the Boston Red Sox are all about that's the biggest thing you know Bob this is a team that that for once over the last couple of years likes to play at Fenway we've had so many teams that don't want to play here they'd rather play on the road they don't like the pressure this team likes the pressure of playing here they like playing in front of 34,000 people every night they they appreciate the support they look we all have rabbit ears we all hear things we don't like when we play but that's part of it if they boo you they're telling you that you're bad in your heart in your mind you know you're bad so you just deal with it and to me it just makes you stronger that's what he should be all off just make him stronger they didn't boo him <laughs> he never got booed never got booed i said to you the other night that I, this is one of my most uh i guess i'm more fond of this red sox team than most of the teams in the past and part of it's because of how these guys all come together i mean they all shave their heads before the ball game tonight not all of them but the guys that were willing to do it so they're a very likable group. This is, again, just to repeat, it's out of character. Yeah, it is out of character. But, you know, what impresses me most about this club is the, is the fact that they don't give up. And they never.
to have given up. You know, all season long, there have been many times this year where you, we look at this team and they played a couple of bad games and you say, ah, here we go. You know, it's going to be August, September, like a couple of years ago or last year. Not the case. They kept bouncing back. They did it again tonight. Well, Kevin Millar, one of those guys with the shaved heads, he's downstairs right now. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was just a, it was a weird game, a bunch of weird calls going on, but it was a dogfight. It was a dogfight. It was a little cold, a little rainy, a great pitching matchup, and unbelievable. A big win for us. It's an unbelievable series. We knew that going in there, and this series was far from being over. You know, we, we, we knew that. And it was just, uh, I mean, this is one of those games that you knew you knew someone was going to come up big, and uh, Trot Nixon did it for us tonight. Mike Timlin did an unbelievable job. That, 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 that job he did through three innings of, of absolutely dominating baseball. And I'll tell you what, you got to tip your hat to our bullpen. Uh, it was a little bit of my idea because I said we need to change something. But, you know, these quirky things work sometimes. And next thing you know, we got 15 guys in there shaving their heads. And here we go. Well, here we go, and you can just feel that, like you said, Jerry, about the resiliency. You can feel it again. What are you laughing at? His haircut? He looks better with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is not afraid, though, to make himself look a little silly. He has the whole uh, karaoke deal on the scoreboard. He came up here the night he put his... Uh, here in the cornrows, he's not afraid to uh, kind of make fun of himself a little bit. Yeah, he's been a major addition to this club, not only with the performance on the field, obviously, but what he brings into the clubhouse. And uh, he'll do crazy things like he's done tonight. He had the braids earlier in the season, the cornrows, whatever you want to call them. But uh, he'll just do things to keep pl pay, uh, players loose. We had a player like that when we played in Louis Tion. Yes. Uh, he didn't have cornrows and all that, but he, <laughs> you know, he would do a lot of crazy stuff, too, to keep us loose. So uh, the Malaz like that. Great play tonight by Jason Veritek, one of the key plays in the ball game. Let's go downstairs and hear from him. Tech, a lot of people have said a lot of unflattering things about this bullpen this year. How good was it tonight? Timmy did a great job, and so did Willie. And we, we need that. And I, I, I said it all along, we're not going to win if we can't get, get the outs in our bullpen. Wednesday night, you guys suffered a tough extra inning loss. Had to come back to the ballpark the next day after being in the hotel for a few hours. Shoe on the other foot tonight? I mean, you know what they're going through? We, we've got we've to go sleep fast and get ready to go tomorrow. How tough was it coming back for game two? I mean, now that you look back at it, especially when they put up some runs early, how, how tough was that to come back? Well... I mean, I actually didn't play and I pinch right. hit, but... But as the team, I mean, and you're, you know, you know the mood, and, and coming back to that, that next morning had to be a, a short turnaround. Both teams go through a, a little little lull early, and they were able to get a huge inning early, and with Zito throwing that, the way he threw that ball that day, that, you know, and we might not have scored many runs if they didn't score any. Confidence in Berkey tomorrow? Definitely. Berkey's been our guy all year. He's, he, he, he's, he's risen to the occasion, and he just needs to go out there and pitch his game and give us a chance to get our offense going. What do you think of the way he looks with the haircut? <laughs> he looks worse than a lot. <laughs> He'll get some numbers across his chest. <laughs> it, well, again, we get to see Jason Veritek play every day, and so we really appreciate what he does. The entire country tonight saw what Jason Veritek can do, how he can change a game. Well, it's been a breakout year for him. He made the all-star team, you know, and I think people recognize the uh, great accomplishments he had in the first half of the season. Now they're watching him play in postseason. You're right, we're lucky we see him play every day. Uh, he's fearless behind the plate. The one, you know, is, I can't think of any other catcher. Mike Socia maybe when he was in the National League, but I don't think anybody does it better at blocking home plate. And so many times this year, he saved the Red Sox a number of runs. Of course, we saw Pudge Rodriguez uh, tonight block the plate uh, in the Marlins game, but this guy here, He's, it's like he's talked soft to carry a big stick. Jason Veritek is the guy behind the plate, and when he says something, he, you listen, and he's going to go out to protect his pitchers, and he's going to protect that plate. All right, let's look ahead to tomorrow. I want to put you guys in the spot, kind of break it down right after this. W.B. Mason's extra innings rolls on as we are already in. Let's see. Yes, it is already Sunday morning here in the Red Sox play in just about 13 hours. Game four as they win this one tonight, 3-1. to one. your first love comes a first breakup and with that first breakup comes an older brother you'll be okay who knows just the right thing to say come on let's go to friendly's right now try friendly's chicken fajita salad our new steak fajita entree salad or any of our delicious fajitas and get a hot fudge sundae free here you go you and me and friendly's Starting with me, everything in this place is mean and miserable. Is that a tear in your eye, Private? Do you want your mommy? Are you going to cry? I'll kick the tradition and chivalry out of you. I suggest you shut your mouth. Ah! 
I can't hear you! Nothing is over until we decide it is! Just one more thing. Don't ever make me mad. Sweet dreams, ladies! Straight left, right, left, huh? Tonight's show is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office product supplier of the Boston Red Sox. You know, I said, I just go out there and pitch my game. You know, and I always feel that if, you know, if I bring my best to the table out there, I'm, I'm usually, we're usually going to be successful. So uh, I let those guys try to make adjustments to me and, uh, you know, just go out there and try to make pitches. That's the bottom line. And uh, I can come out and pitch a good game, keep us in the game. We bang the ball around a little bit and uh, get us to a game five. You know, I really like our chances. Well, that is the matchup. It's John Burkett against Tim Hudson. And uh, my question to you guys, Jerry, what happens with John Burkett? We know he has the first inning trouble. How much patience can Grady have if, let's say, he has a little first inning trouble there tomorrow? Well, I think it's a little bit different than regular season. You know, if he has some problems early, I think Grady will have somebody up in the bullpen very soon. And uh, uh, he said today that Wakefield would be available tomorrow, we, uh, even possibly Arroyo, you know, somebody if you need in that, li in that uh, situation. But, uh, you know, this guy's a veteran pitcher. He's been in the playoffs before. He's going to have an attack. He's going to have it a plan. And if and obviously, if he hits his spots, he's going to be effective. We've seen it all season long. It looks like a mismatch on paper. Number one against number four, but uh, or even in this case, five this year, but uh, number four in the playoffs. Uh, but if Burkett hits his spots, changes speeds, you know, this Oakland lineup, they, they have some problems scoring runs. Jimmy, in your days playing, as a hitter, you're facing a great pitcher, say a Ron Guidry, you face him a few days later. Does that help you after seeing him just a few days later facing him again? Yes. Uh it's going to help because you know how to adjust. You, you have a program that he, how he wants to pitch you. And like Hudson said, the hitter's got to make an adjustment. He's not going to make an adjustment because he's been getting them out. He said they got to make an adjustment. If they decide they're not going to make an adjustment, Hudson's going to tear him up. Jerry, I thought tonight watching the ball game when Derek Lowe was out there, I thought the Oakland A's were really trying to pull him a lot, and it seemed like that was part of their problem. Yeah, you know, Lowe, Lowe obviously had a great sinker tonight, and when they were pounding the ball on the ground, I was a little bit surprised that some of those left-handed hitters didn't try to take that sinker the other way, move up on the plate, as Jimmy said earlier, and then just try to, you know, hit the ball up the middle the other way. They continued to try to pull him, and that really works into the hands of Derek Lowe. But, you know, this was this was a huge outing for him, and, and you know, think about what he's up against. He's, this whole rest of the ball club's going home. You know, you're right. So this is a big outing for him. By the way, can I see that scorecard? Classic. This, this, is, this the classic. is the classic card. Now this is the. Uh, I have a hard time reading it. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know where you sign it, but this uh, Trot Nixon walk off home run. There you go. The RemyReport.com. You want this scorecard signed by Jerry Remy? That's the place to go. The RemyReport.com. This is a classic, though, Jerry. Anytime you have a walk off home run, you know the Red Sox come back to win the series. Uh, this is the game that you point to. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm saving them all, and if they come back in this series, the whole series will be a classic. <laughs> there you go. All right. For Jerry Remy and Jim Rice, I'm Bob Rogers. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you'll be with us again tomorrow afternoon as we will have complete post-game coverage on W.B. Mason's Extra Innings. Once again, your final score tonight, the Red Sox win it in 11. 3-1 is the final. And this has been an exclusive presentation of Nesson, your ticket to Boston Red Sox baseball. Good night, everybody.